What's going on everyone? John Rittinger from Techno Buffalo here with an unboxing of the latest flagship from Samsung. This is, if you can read, the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. I'm really excited to take a look at this. I, I've yet to see one uh, in person. We've got the 32 gigabyte version here done up in black, or it's kind of a bluish black color, also available in white. Uh, the box looks just like the current generation Samsung devices, nothing really exciting on it. We've got some specs, but you don't have to worry. I'm gonna talk you through all that. Let's go ahead and open this sucker up. And there, of course, sitting right on top, we have the Note 5. It feels good. Push off to the side for a quick second see what else we're going to have inside of the box. We're going to have, if I can get it out, quick start guide for getting started quickly. We have a SIM removal tool for, you can, you can, you can probably guess. And here inside, we've got all kinds of stuff. We've got a power adapter that is not going to work here in the US, but if I was able to plug that in, uh, it would be quick charge enabled. We've got this guy, which took me a while and a few note versions to realize what this is. This is a tool to remove the tip of the S Pen and put in fresh tips if you need. We've got a micro USB charging cord, a no USB-C, this is just standard micro. Then we've got what appears to be a pretty nice uh, set of headphones, at least in plastic, not just sitting on its own uh, with noise canceling mic and uh, looks to be uh, different size ear gels in there uh, as well. But none of that is why you are here. This is the reason everybody's here to see the latest, the Note 5. Let me go ahead and peel off the plastic. Or I can probably just slide it out, but that's no fun. Let's peel off the plastic. More satisfying that way. There we go. And we've got the Note 5 with its curved glass back and feeling really nice. I'll go ahead and power it on and we can run through some specs. So it is a 5.7 inch Super AMOLED display. So that means it's got a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and also a 515 PPI. Uh, it's Samsung's usually pretty awesome uh, Super AMOLED technology here. I think Samsung makes some of the best screens. So we'll see how it translates to with the Note 5. Uh, powering this guy is just a ridiculous octa-core chip. It's the Exynos 7420. Also keeping this phone humming is a ridiculous four gigs of RAM. Uh, storage, no expandable storage, uh, but it is going to be available in 32 or 64. No 128 available, at least not yet. Um, it's also not going to have a removable battery. It does have a 3000 milliamp hour pack on board. Uh, one of the other cool features, of course, with the current generation Samsung devices, it is uh, Qi and PMA enabled, so you can charge it with pretty much any wireless charger. This will charge extra fast if you have one of Samsung's new wireless chargers, uh, sort of quick charge uh, for wireless. Camera on the back is 16 megapixel on the front we've got a five megapixel sensor, and it of course has NFC. If you want the difference between this and the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, it's really just the curved sides and the S Pen. Uh, a little bit of width difference. Uh, this is 76.1 millimeters or three inches, whereas the S6 Edge Plus is a little thinner at 75.8 millimeters or 2.98 inches. Uh, we still have TouchWiz here, or at least their modern UI, see what it looks like. Um, a few changes. Uh, we have a much thinner and lighter version of Samsung's modern UI, or more commonly referred to as TouchWiz. Uh, this should be 5.1.1 based, but let's go ahead and check that for ourselves. Go down to the bottom, about device, and it is based on 5.1.1. So around the device, you've got a physical home button. It's also your fingerprint sensor. Flanked on either side, you've got capacitive, a back button, and multitasking button. On the left, volume up and down. On the right, that's where your power and lock button is going to live. On top, there's your SIM tray. We've got noise canceling mic. You can see the antenna bands. On the bottom, micro USB speaker. We've got noise canceling mic, 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and the S Pen. You're probably saying to yourself, self, how do I get that S Pen out? I will tell you in just a moment. Uh, the back, it's the same glass covering that we've seen on the S6 and the S6 Edge, but now it's got a curve to it on the back, as you can see, or on the sides. Uh, curves make it feel nice in the hand. And I will say it certainly does. Uh, to pop the S Pen out, it's now spring-loaded, so you do a little push, and it pops right out. You can pull it out of the device, and you're immediately greeted with Air Command. This is how you can go ahead and launch different things here with the S Pen. New, though, you can now add shortcuts. If you want to launch an app or something, you can go ahead and do that. So let's say you always want to use Chrome. You can go ahead and set that, and maybe you like to use Instagram. Uh, you can set that there too. We'll go ahead and go back. And now it'll show up and you can launch it very nice and easily. Um, the S Pen feels almost identical to the last version. It doesn't feel heavy, there's not much weight to it. It does have a physical button, uh, but now you can annoy people with being able to actually sort of sit there and click it when you are in meetings, just like you can on a normal pen. I think one of the coolest features though of the S Pen, you have to enable it in settings, it's called off-screen memo. To go ahead and eject the S Pen, it looks like the screen is off, 
uh, but you can actually start writing on it, almost like you can on, on a blackboard or even a pen and paper, just any notes you want. You can just scribble notes and you can go ahead and save it directly to your device, save or delete it, and you'll have those notes there ready for you. Really handy, quick feature. If you want to write down a phone number or something, you can go ahead uh, and do that. I will draw you a smiley face because I am feeling happy. So that is here as well. Push the S Pen back. I haven't always been the biggest fan of TouchWiz. I will say it was much lighter and easier to use and less to learn and less cumbersome and less additions uh, in the current generation of Samsung devices. If you look ahead in apps, uh, there's still a decent amount of things preloaded in here, but a uh, very little carrier bloatware. Uh, this isn't a carrier branded device. This is uh, their unlocked international version, which will not be sold in Europe. So if you're in Europe and you wanted a note, you are going to have to pay a lot of money to import it. Um, not sure why Samsung decided to do that, but they felt like you did not want a stylus. You can see what the icons look like. One of the beauties of Android, though, if you don't like this, the Google Now launcher, Nova launcher, or a slew of other launchers are just uh, an app store download away. So we're going to do a full review and a full test of uh, the Note 5 and put it through its paces. Uh, we'll test battery, we'll test camera, uh, and the likes. Um, let us know anything you guys want to see in particular. Leave in the comments down below and we'll be sure to test it for you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye.